In today's news, a big bike's a big problem. Corporate BVI gives away tens of thousands of dollars for Christmas. New race day set as Boxing Day races ends prematurely. Guyana declares December 20th as National Petroleum Day as the country reaps uh, oil three months ahead of schedule. And your weekly arrest blotter. These and more stories when 284 News returns. Is business slow? Cash flow down? Hosting an upcoming event? We can help. Advertise with 284 Media and take your business or event to the next level by enhancing your present marketing and messaging strategies. Allow our team of experts to create a personalized ad that sets your business apart from all the rest. This could be your business or event. So, what are you waiting for? Contact our marketing team at 284 Media at cctbvi.com. Advertising with us works. When you need to stay connected with friends and families at home or abroad, the best choice for you is Freedom. CCT Freedom. With the lowest rates in the market, our Freedom plan gives you unlimited calls and texting. Plus, our Freedom One package includes 10 gigabits of super fast unlimited LTE data and unlimited calls to the BVI, USA, USVI, Canada, Puerto Rico, and UK lines. Why pay for overages when you can enjoy CCT Freedom? Stop by at one of our stores today and speak with one of our representatives to find out more about our CCT Freedom packages. Welcome, everybody. It's Friday, December 27, 2019. I'm Ron Grant. And I am Javon Wilson. Of course, the last Friday for 2019, Indeed. We Ron. hope each of you had a wonderful uh, Christmas with yes. your friends and family. How was your Christmas? It was really good. Nice. I spent some time, Likewise. well, the first half of the day cooking, and then, of course, there we headed go. over to the family, spent some time with the family. Wonderful. But overall, we're just really grateful, viewers, um, for this year being able to deliver honest and impartial news to you guys, Indeed. as well as for your unwavering support throughout the entire 20. 2019. 2020 is promising and we have a lot in store we here at 284 Media. Indeed. Topping our newscast today, just shy of the first two races of the day, the highly anticipated Boxing Day horse race at the Ellis Thomas Downs was yesterday, December 26, forced to an early end after the territory ban experiencing heavy rainfall. Hundreds had already gathered, many from the neighboring USVI as well as a number of vendors. Just two of the seven races of the day were held before the inclement weather forced official to put postpone their naming, uh, remaining sorry, races. God's Greatness from St. Thomas took home the first purse of $5,000 in the six and a half furlong for Class D horses. In the second race, Nadia's image from the BVI Top Priority Racing Stables ran uh, triumphant and claimed the $5,000 prize in the one mile race for Class C and D horses. Uh, and it was a really, really incredible race up until the point uh, in addition to that. Now, a new race day, and speaking to Mr. Leshmore Smith today on the phone, a new race day has been set for January 19th, 2020, and was chosen specifically to accommodate fellow horse owners and patrons from the neighboring United States Virgin Islands, as that weekend in the USVI will be celebrated as Martin Luther King Jr.'s holiday on January 20th. Uh, additionally, organizers confirmed that Mr. William the Judge Reimer, the BVI's longest living resident and well-known horse race enthusiast, will still be honored as well as the late Oliver Skelton. Patrons are asked to keep their wristbands for the new date to enable them to enter to the gate, and the first two races that were held would not be repeated. The races on January 19th will only be including the remaining five races. Jovan, of course, as you could expect, many dressed uh, to a T and excited, but the rain had other plans, so... That's Fashion event of the Indeed. year. Luckily, I know persons came from as far as Virgin Goddess, St. Yes. Thomas, of course, all the other sister islands. But thank God those tickets are transferable. <laughs> um, it's really unfortunate that it rained out. But um, January 19th is a big it's day. It's a new date. All right. The viewers were moving right along. Corporate BVI truly stepped up uh, this Christmas and made way for a pool of winnings across the territory. Now, first off, our very own CCT, among their 12 Days of Christmas initiative, afforded three customers the opportunity to win big. We have Miss Stacy and Bob, who walked away with, get this, uh -huh. $5,000 in good, cash on December right 23rd. There. Of course, all compliments of CCT. Now, ecstatic about her Christmas cash, Stacey Ann had this to say. It was really unexpected and shocking, actually, because when I got the call, it was just like, come to CCT, what did I even do? Um... Then it was explained to me. I was like, oh, okay, cool. 
Um, my bill was actually paid as a gift this month. Um, so shout out to that blessing. But yeah, it was all kind of cool. Um, it was thrilling once I got into the studio and then we were told that we would have to randomly choose an envelope or whatever the case was. <clears throat> I still have to work out what I'm going to do with the money in terms of how I plan to invest it. Aran, $5,000 so is chunk of cash. a lot of yeah. money. What would you have done with $5,000? Uh, I'm not sure if I could say that on TV, <laughs> but I would have enjoyed it. Let's just say that. Isn't that the reason why I love Ron, okay? <laughs> Honestly? <laughs> um, <true>. Really. <laughs> <laughs> but we also had Mr. Fillmore Butler, who also won a phone of his choice, and Mr. Glenroy Jennings. He received internet service for one year. Good now, stuff. within their 12 Days of Christmas initiative, CCT also presented gifts and eight matrices to the Rainbow Home, presented turkey bags to the Family Support Network, and of course, CCT's iconic orange Santa provided gifts for scores of children at their Pier Park location. Now, Rightway, also known as RTW, through their annual December to Remember promotion, also had a lot up for grabs. We had Miss Sophia Bariff, a hairdresser from Lower Estate. Uh, well, she was the grand prize winner of Rightway's $10,000 shopping voucher. Yeah, that's good she too. said, quote, there are so many things I wanted to do this Christmas, like get gifts for friends and family. But this year, after the 2017 hurricanes, we are now settling down and we are trying to rebuild a few things. So we didn't plan on spending or splurging. But now this is wonderful. I can bless a few people and that I am thankful for, she said. And finally, the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force came through in a major, major way last Christmas Eve. Moriel Penn walked away with a brand new 2019 Ford Ranger XLT. All compliments of the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force, Tertola Auto Group, as well as Delta Gas Station. Uh, the winner also got six months free gas, courtesy of Delta. Now, all of us, you know, Ron, when we partake in raffles, like all of us, uh, Miss Penn was very adamant that she would win. She said, quote, I told them that I'm coming back for it. I don't know why. I was shocked when they called me. And as you can imagine, she kept screaming, I can't believe it. I bought five tickets, which was a book. It was for a good cause, so I decided to just buy the entire book. Now, aside from the first place winner, Margaret Bolton of Easton also won a cash prize of $500, while a virgin guardian, Miss Becky, cashed in on a 55-inch uh, television. To round off the night's prizes, the Grand Christmas Eve raffle was a major fundraiser for the Force's 2020 Police Week, of course, to assist with community development. So a lot Indeed. of great things just in time for Christmas. And one of the things I love about the, the three uh, organizations that we just spoke about, CCT, Rhode Island Wholesale, and of course the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force, is that they it's not only around Christmas. Right. A lot of the uh, fundraising efforts are done to be able to contribute to the community throughout. And when you see organizations giving... Uh, Take, for example, uh, the beds to the Rainbow Children's yes. Home. Very well needed. It's not a want, it's a need. Right. Um, and so I think it's a great initiative that corporate BVI should also look at too. All across the uh, mm -hmm. region uh, during the year, persons need stuff, so let's contribute. And not it just shows that yeah. corporate BVI cares, because like you rightfully <laughs> said, you know, we can gift anything, but once yeah. you're able to, you know, analyze your community and, 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 the and needs, identify yeah. the needs of the community and, and address those needs, I think it's always a win-win for everyone. Good stuff. All right, still ahead, big bikes and big problems. Plus, Guyana reaps oil three months ahead of time as president declares December 20th, National Petroleum Day. These and more stories when to wait for news returns. Everyone looks to the future, but no one truly knows what the future holds. The number of people under the age of 20 with type 2 diabetes could increase by 49% by 2050. Let it be known that we all have a 30% chance of developing hypertension. Globally, more than 300 million people of all ages suffer from depression. More than 60,000 young adults aged 20 to 39 are diagnosed with cancer each year. 
obesity leads to problems such as stroke, heart disease, and kidney failure. No matter your race, age, or color, we are all at risk. These diseases can be managed or prevented if caught early. But with the right medicine and the right doctors to keep us on a path to live a robust and healthy life. We will live well. Viewers, welcome back. Big bikes, big problem. Mm -hmm. uh, just as short of two weeks as Cabinet decided to amend the uh, legislation and raise a ban on large bikes, B bikers across the territory are beginning to be a nuisance. That is according to one person, resident, expressing her concerns on social media throughout the Virgin Islands on Christmas Day, particularly in districts 4, 5, and 6. Bikers disturbed residents all day long as they took to the streets to enjoy their large bikes. One could only imagine this excitement, Jovan, comes as Cabinet recently raised a ban on large bikes. Bikers seem to have missed or simply ignored the clause about those very same bikes having to be pre-approved by Cabinet and persons operating bikes uh, having to uh, meet particular criteria before operating the roadways. Some of those criteria include a three-prong licensing regimen, compulsory basic training for every motorcycle rider, theater theoretical sorry, testing and full rider testing, a minimum age limit and minimum riding experience requirement for larger CC engine sizes, a mandatory DMV program, and certification. These mechanisms are said to allow riders to demonstrate their competence and levels of safe riding on public roadways by age and experience. All persons who wish to import these larger capacity motorcycles into the BVI must obtain a certificate from the Department of Motor Vehicles in order to do so. In order to receive certification, riders must undergo a DMV-approved program that offers instructions in operation, maintenance, emergencies, defensive riding, judgment, and use of safety equipment as it relates to larger size bikes. The Royal Virgin Islands Police Force did confirm a large number of calls and complaints by residents on Christmas Day requesting patrol units in various neighborhoods on Christmas Day. Some cited noise complaints as well as a fair of small children who were out playing. The question is, uh, Jovan, is this just the beginning? What are your thoughts? <sighs> I think the big question when it comes to biking in the BVI has always been, um, especially with the new legislation um, on its way, is are we ready for it? Mm -hmm. um, I don't think we have fully analyzed what we're getting ourselves into. As in is a lot of stuff. Answer. Right, yeah. as is a lot of stuff. And you really have to analyze the situation. Are we, how are we even currently managing the bikers on the mm -hmm. road as of now before that ban was lifted? Have we really taken into account what and we're the, getting the, into? The, uh, the ban lifting, it was only an announcement, you know. There, Again, their, their legislation is being amended to facilitate it, but there are a lot of measures that have to be put in place. So it's almost like you just hear that a band uh, has been lifted right. or we're moving in that direction and everybody goes You know, we're not crazy. even there yet and you're already making exactly. it, a, a, you know, you're attaching a negative stigma to it. I mean, there's all, already a, a negative stigma attached to it, but we don't want to make that situation worse. What I'm really happy about is the Department of DMV, like you mm -hmm. said, there's a really uh, strict criteria to meet, um, but also additionally, I would really, really hope that there are stiff penalties in place for persons who abuse the road rules um, because, like you said, there is a fear attached to it. We yeah. want to ensure sure that when we're using the roads, um, it's safe for other persons, you Agreed. know, other road users as well. Um, so I know, and, and when I say, when I speak to the negatives of it, I don't speak to all bike riders. We, of we course, we do have a, a very a, a good amount of uh, bike riders that yeah. they abide by the law and yes. they do what they're supposed to correct. There is a biking community yes. that really, really pays attention to the rules and they, they're trying to repeat that stigma, of course, but we just have to, we'll just have to wait and see what comes out of it. Um, I know the territory is split on this one. Of course. Course. However, viewers, we have to move right along. His Excellency David Granger, President of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana, proclaimed December 20th, 2019 as National Petroleum Day as production began months ahead of schedule. Now, the president said that the decade is a 10-year plan to intensify development and improve citizens' quality of life. Let's go to a clip about the announcement. Guyanese. I shall issue a proclamation declaring the 20th of December as National Petroleum Day. The proclamation will remind us of our duty to protect the country's patrimony and to ensure the sustainable management of our finite hydrocarbon resources. I have been advised that petroleum production 
is about to commence three months ahead of the original schedule Guyana has become a petroleum producing state petroleum production will be a transformative process in the country's economic development the petroleum sector will stimulate increased employment and expand services your government will unveil a decade of development 2020 to 2029 aimed at ensuring that petroleum resources will be utilized to provide the good life for all. President Granger there out of Guyana now, he said every Guyanese will benefit from the production of petroleum. No one will be left behind. He said that the government is taking steps to safeguard the national interest and as, and as a result, the Department of Energy was established to manage the country's hydrocarbon resources. The department is seeking the best advice, including international best practices, as it builds the institutional, legislative and regulatory capability to manage the sector effectively as well as efficiently. He also listed the establishment of legislation to regulate the sector. He said that the Natural Resource Fund Act 2019 was passed by the National Assembly. The act provides for ensuring that the country's resources wealth benefits both current and future generations. It incorporates oversight, accounting, reporting, and auditing mechanisms to promote prudent, transparent, and accountable management of the country's newfound revenue. The president proudly expressed that the new wealth will make it possible for them to prioritize investment in public education, public health, public infrastructure, security, social protection, and other social services, and will support the private sector's development. He said a higher quality of life is guaranteed for oil. oil sorry. Now, American oil giant ExxonMobil will go down in history as the first company to pump oil for commercial purposes in Guyana. First oil production was initially expected to go on stream during the first quarter of 2020. However, several weeks ago, HESS Corporation, a partner of Exxon, announced the first oil was possible late 2019. Now, already all systems are being oiled for petroleum production as the South American's country first oil will be up for direct sale to international traders this week. This is a big deal, my friend. Uh, coming from your homeland, what are your thoughts? I'm very proud. Um, uh, Guyana is one of the, the third world countries, um, and the economy, um, I would think, is really stifled yeah. by some of the struggles we have with money management. Um, and like we were speaking behind the scenes, we waited 23 years mm -hmm. for a change of government, and we're just going to have to trust and hope that this, that this government, government truly correct. manages the oil resources, because, I mean, ever since we've discovered oil, even Venezuela and the other countries are fighting mm -hmm. to uh, reacquire some of the land you know, where they're, they're digging for the oil. So we'll just have to wait and see. But I'm really proud. It's I know the deal. GDP is estimated to be multiplied by 200%. Yeah. Um, so a lot of great things for Guyana um, once the resource is managed well. Viewers still ahead, we've got your weekly arrest blotter. And trust me, this oh, week yeah. it's a hefty one. A lot more after our 284 Media News Break. Why are you really running for a boss? You could have bust a hole in your head. But well, see with the competition. It's means about to bust a hole in your pocket. I could get my modem, please. Anyhow, I got something used to show you. Eh? You gotta be sick in your head. The whole on string bean, thin a kind of party. Check this. That's LTE1 for just about everyone. LTE2 for you and your boo. And hold on. Bam! Rate so low, you feel like you're free. That's LTE tree for you and the whole family. Save even more on your internet with new pricing from CCT. Get LTE 2 now for only $149. Get LTE 3 for the new low price of $189. All packages are unlimited, so there's no overage charge. You don't have to run into chats for savings. Just stop by our store and sign up today. Come on over to CCT. Life Unlimited. Hello? Wait, you're not locked again? You said you were sick? What happened to all wedding rehearsals? Um, no, no, babe. I'm actually watching the news right now. Take, take, take a listen. 
Topping our newscast today, UFOs seen around Tortola Pier Park. And District 3 residents outraged over no water supply. They simply cannot bathe. These and more stories when 284 News returns. Ad All right, babe, just get some rest. Take to Advil and I'll see you later. Bye. Okay, honey, I see you later. I love you. It's clear to see that Coconut Lounge is a place to be, the coolest cocktail lounge in the British Virgin Islands. A lounge like no other, with welcoming, professional service, and a breathtaking ambiance. Not forgetting a diverse selection of wines, beers, and signature cocktails. Cozy, comfortable, contemporary. Coconut Lounge at Tortola Pier Park. Visit us today. Viewers, welcome back. And now on to our weekly arrest blotter from the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force. Deshaun Hodge, 19 of Humptons, got arrested and charged for unlawful and malicious wounding and possession of a firearm with intent to endanger sorry, life. He appeared before the magistrate's court and was remanded to Her Majesty's prison. Bob Archibald, 34 of Crab Hill, Virgin Water, arrested and charged for inflicting grievous bodily harm. He was granted bail in the amount of $5,000. Alina Smith, 32 of the Valley, Virgin Water, arrested in charge for theft and obtaining property by deception. She was granted bail in the amount of $7,000. Keith Roy Joseph, 31 of Long Look, arrested in charge for two counts of theft. He was granted bail. Uh, De Conte Maduro, 27 of Long Bush, arrested in charge for assault occasioning actual bodily harm. He was granted bail in the amount of $5,000. Mr. Jerome Nibs, 41 of Seacouse Bay, arrested in charge for possession of proceeds of criminal conduct and failing to declare monies to Her Majesty's Majesty Customs. He appeared before the magistrate's court and was granted bail in the amount of $100,000, $50,000 cash, and 50 signed surety. Mm. Verbert Morgan, 30, of Bellevue, arrested and charged for possession of proceeds of criminal conduct and failing to declare monies to Her Majesty's Customs. He was appeared before the magistrate's court and was also granted bail in the amount of $10,000, $50,000 cash, and another $50,000 signed surety. Jaquil Harrigan, 27, of Harrigan's estate, arrested and charged for unlawful possession of a controlled drug. He was granted bail in the amount of $5,000. And added to that, Mikhail Robin, 27, of Spyglass Hill, arrested and charged for unlawful possession of a controlled drug and unlawful possession of a controlled drug with intent to transfer to another. He was granted bail in the amount of $5,000. That's Reen Christopher, 20, of Harrigan Estate, arrested and charged for criminal damages. He was granted bail in the amount of $5,000. Mr. Kevin Kevin Stoddard, 37, of Bahars Bay, arrested and charged for indecent language, insulting language, failing to comply with a no-entry sign, and failing to comply with a one-way sign. He was granted bail in the amount of $1,000. Mr. Kahim Clarence, 24, of Longbush, was arrested and charged for threatening language. He was granted bail in the amount of $5,000. We have Osinis uh, Bajara, 28, of Purcell, arrested and charged for driving without a driver license, reckless driving, driving uh, an unlicensed and uninsured vehicle, and insulting language. He was granted bail in the amount of $5,000. We have Miss Nikita Naval, 24 of Seacows Bay, for driving, who was driving, sorry, without a driver's license and driving when not covered by a policy of insurance. We, he, sorry, was arrested and granted bail in the amount of $1,000. Mr. Ricardo Martin of Bajas Bay arrested and charged for driving without a driver's license and driving without insurance and failing to stop at stoplights. He was granted bail in the amount of $5,000. Mr. Charles Hawkins Bias, 25 of North Song, Virgin Gorda, arrested and charged for driving without a driver's license, failing to report an accident where damage to property was caused, and reckless driving, driving when not covered by a policy of insurance, failing to stop at the scene of an accident and two counts of criminal damage. He was arrested and charged accordingly. So quite a hefty week yes, for the Royal have. Virgin Islands busy, busy Police week. Force. Um, and we see a common trend of driving without license. Correct. Force. It's, I that's a popular that's coming one. From. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. All right, viewers, that is it for today's news roundup. Be sure to like us on Facebook at 284 Media and 284BVI on Instagram as well as Twitter. My name is Javon Wilson. And I'm Ron Grant. We'll see you again on Monday as we deliver your daily dose of local, regional, and international content. 284 News, your source for honest and impartial news. Happy Friday, everybody. Enjoy the rain. Have a great weekend. <laughs> it's been said, sticks and stones may break bones, but words don't hurt me. That cannot be further from the truth. Everything you say and do creates an impact. 
Whether you're 13 or 30, 6 or 60, your actions and words carry weight. They either lift someone up or tear them down. One in five students ages 12 to 18 has been bullied during the school year. Approximately 160 teens have skipped school because of bullying. The most commonly reported types of bullying are verbal harassment, social harassment, physical bullying, and cyberbullying. Remember, everyone you meet is fighting a battle you know nothing about, and bullying is never okay, whether it's in a classroom or a corporation. 284 Media joins the Ministry of Education of the Government of the Virgin Islands in the fight against bullying. When you see it or hear it, speak up against it. Let's end bullying.